We all rely on farmers and ranchers, but farming is riskier than other businesses out there. Crop insurance helps farmers manage their risk. With crop insurance, farmers put skin in the game by paying premiums and shouldering deductibles. That keeps taxpayers from having to pick up the whole bill every time disaster strikes. Today, about 90% of U.S. farmland is insured, providing $100 billion in protection to more than 130 different kinds of crops. It's a testament to the program's success. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week in Review. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Senior Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And to be honest with you folks, we uh, a week ago today, we thought we were going to have more to talk to you about during, during this week's video. Uh, just a lot of things that were really teed up to happen this week. We really thought this was going to be a, uh, a week that we were working, uh, you know, consecutive 14-hour days basically the entire week because of the amount of news that was going to be coming in. That's just not what happened. And we were going to tell you everything that was yeah. in the farm bill. Everything that was in the farm bill. This is going to be a 45-minute week in review video <laughs> for you. But uh, some things uh, delayed that process. And so as we sit here right now, uh, still awaiting the uh, full legislative text of the 2018 farm bill, the conference report, still awaiting House and Senate uh, votes on final passage of that legislation. And so, Phil, I, I guess at, at this point, th things have kind of been delayed. What, what really is driving that delay? Well, I'm told, a uh, source told me a few minutes ago that uh, they've just been struggling with getting all of the numbers back from the Congressional Budget Office. CBO has to ensure that the bill doesn't increase spending, that it's uh, deficit neutral. Um, they was told that they thought they could do this in pieces. They had to have the whole thing. They made some minor changes um, to the tax, and so they're still working to get that all in order. Um, so we're still hoping to see it early next week and uh, of course I know all of our viewers out there are as well eager to learn about uh, all the minute detail and all of these the 12 titles of the bill uh, as are we and uh, hopefully early next week yeah so you mentioned kind of that brief uh, the brief the brief timeline there of you know hoping for a for a bill early next week but where do things go after that at this point do we have any intelligence uh, that tells us what things might look like after bill release well house to have have to have final votes on the floor of the house and the senate they cannot change let's be clear they cannot change this conference agreement it has to be voted up or down don't think that's going to be a problem. It could be a fairly close vote in the House, still hard to tell. Um, probably not in the Senate, uh, should, should pass comfortably there. In terms of timing, that's still to be determined. It's possible the Senate could go first, uh, kind of depends on to the extent the uh, Farm Bill might get caught up in some maneuvering over other uh, issues on the Senate floor that they have to deal with in the next couple of weeks. So uh, you mentioned that we're still waiting on that, that full comprehensive legislative text, but details starting to emerge, starting to a leak. In terms of specifics, what, what do we know at this point? Well, we've talked and we've reported on a number of different things over the last uh, probably the month uh, that this has sort of been pretty much wrapped up. Uh, it's funny, the, uh, the uh, top Democrat on the House Agriculture Committee, the uh, next chairman of the committee, Colin Peterson of Minnesota, uh, actually went back to Minnesota for a couple of days and uh, talked to about some of the details and revealed some new uh, uh, aspects of the bill, particularly about the dairy program. And it's uh, pretty clear that uh, it's now called the Margin Protection Program. It's going to be renamed, uh, but it's also going to be enhanced with a real goal of helping out farms on the smaller side, 240 cows and under. Uh, Basically, with the changes, uh, Congressman Peterson says it will, as he put it, it will be difficult to go out of business. And um, this is, uh, there's a lot of urgency here on this side because we're getting reports from state after state of 
of uh, smaller operations, large numbers of, of uh, the smaller operations going out of business this year. Mm -hmm. So obviously uh, the, the full specifics, the full minutia is not known at this point. I would encourage you to, to stop by agripulse.com. Uh, what we know at this point, uh, Phil has compiled into a story and has written into a, that was written into this week's newsletter. Uh, I, I'd encourage you to give that story a read, uh, sign up for a free trial if you'd like to uh, see all of the all of the coverage that's going to be coming on the farm bill here in the next uh, next couple of weeks. But uh, speaking of things that ha need to happen in the next couple of weeks, uh, we had talked to you briefly in, in last week's video and in some preceding ones that uh, last Friday, or excuse me, this coming Friday was the uh, was the deadline for uh, government funding. It was set to expire, and uh, without uh, without any kind of congressional action, there was going to be a uh, kind of a partial government shutdown. A, a number of agencies were going to run out of funding. Um, as I'm sure you all know at this point, uh, over the weekend, uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, depending what time zone you're in, uh, President George H.W. Bush passed away. And so that's uh, really, uh, obviously, it uh, did a lot of things to the legislative calendar here in Washington, in addition to, uh, you know, some of the some of the formalities and some of the some of the things that go along with the presidential funeral. Um, not to make light, light of any of that, but uh, that did kind of stall things in terms of the government funding discussion. And so it was uh, an agreement was reached to uh, postpone that discussion for another two weeks. Uh, the House uh, and Senate have passed that bill uh, by voice vote. And so, Phil, uh, we were briefly joking uh, before we press record on this on a Thursday afternoon. Um, you planning on being here for New Year's? Is uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that, that's something that's, uh, that could potentially happen here. <laughs> Yeah, potentially could, and I deliberately did not make any plans to go anywhere over <laughs> Christmas week, uh, just because uh, that was made that decision uh, some time ago. Uh, yeah, we now we will now have a new deadline of uh, December 21st, right up on Christmas, uh, but we don't uh, have any resolution in sight to the big dispute, and that's over funding the border wall. As we've told you, uh, the president wants five billion dollars. Uh, the Democrats, the Congressional Democrats are saying $1.6 billion. Uh, Republicans on the Hill have proposed doing it in uh, two parts, doing the $5 billion in two parts. Today, the incoming, uh, well, likely to be House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, said, let's just put that uh, Homeland Security bill on ice uh, uh, for the rest of the fiscal year, and we'll pass the other spending bills that haven't been passed yet, and that includes uh, USDA, FDA, EPA, and Interior, and be done with it. Uh, the Republican whip on the Senate side uh, just a few minutes ago said, no dice, <laughs> we're not doing that, uh, we've got we've to pass a Homeland Security bill. So there we are. Yep. So still, still awaiting some kind of resolution to the to the dispute over uh, just how much money is going to be uh, reallocated to the southern border of the United States between the U.S. and Mexico. Uh, we'll let you know when we figure that out. <laughs> but uh, before we go, speaking of uh, relations between the United States and Mexico, and let's throw Canada into the discussion for a brief bit as well. Uh, I want to tell you about something that uh, you're, you're all probably well aware of at this point, but it did happen since we last came to you in one of these videos. Uh, that, of course, being the signing of the new uh, USMCA trade agreement, an update to the North American Free Trade Agreement that uh, resolution was reached uh, a, a number of months ago, but now we do have official pen to paper from the uh, from the leaders of the three countries. And uh, Phil, obviously now it goes through the ratification process in all three of those countries. And we, uh, you mentioned some comments from Leader Pelosi, uh, potentially soon to be Speaker Pelosi. Uh, she also touched a bit on on NAFTA and the update thereof, and and what she's going to want to see to uh, really get House Democrats to agree to to ratify that. Agreement. Yeah, it's interesting. She said that um, you know, worker environmental protections are still important, but she she didn't rule out um, um, you know taking it up and uh, approving it. What the only linkage that she directly made is that um, requ or uh, requirement that she directly made uh, was that um, Mexico had to act on commitments to. Uh, increase their worker standards. Uh, so she indicated that that needed to happen first before this agreement could be uh, uh, approved here in Congress. 
Mm -hmm. So that's something to watch into the uh, next Congress as well. Also something to watch here in, in the very near future, uh, some developments happened over the weekend. Uh, the United States and China uh, meeting in uh, Argentina at the G20 summit, uh, discussing some things there and uh, coming to a potential signal of resolution in the trade dispute between the US and China. Uh, obviously, it's still a number of details uh, that need to emerge before uh, we can, you know, officially, uh, before either country can really officially uh, signal victory on that. Uh, still a lot of negotiation that has to happen between uh, U.S. and Chinese officials. But uh, we will be certain to uh, keep you up to date on the details as they emerge and as they are relevant to the United States agriculture industry. But I think that's going to do it for this week. So for Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.